Welcome back to Escapement and Watch. I'm your host, Falling Titan. Hell is empty. Okay. And all the devils are here. I don't know about all the devils, but I have one devil, the Devil Diver from Belova. This is a cool watch. Belova is a company started in 1875. They have a cool history. I don't know why they're not as popular as some other brands. It's kind of a mystery what went wrong. Brand with a ton of history. And in 1927, they made a watch for Charles Lindbergh to celebrate crossing the ocean in 1927. That is so cool. And the watch was called the Lone Eagle. He flew solo across the ocean. First man ever to do that. And that's a beautiful watch. I'm gonna put a picture up here for you guys. Very nice. And then they actually made the world's first commercial on the radio. That's cool. They're very, they're very innovative. And then in 1961, Microsonic Vibrations, the Accutron, used in 46 missions for NASA. And it's been on the moon. NASA used Belova technology for timekeeping in satellites for important data. What a cool company, but this video is not about that. We're gonna talk about the Devil Diver. Let's check it out. All right, quick thanks to Kavar Jewelers for lending this watch into the channel. If you wanna buy this watch, email me in the description below and I'll give you a discount code. Introducing the Belova Ocean Grapher Devil Diver. Okay, so the case shape. Straight away you can see it reminds you of a Seiko Turtle, but this watch is a reissue from 1972. So it is their design and it is very different. So it might seem like a turtle, but first of all, the crown is at three and Belova is calling this a Turno style case. Don't know what that means. I think in Italian, it means turn. Now look at the bottom ledge of that case. It concaves inwards. It's a very deep concave. It's hard to show because this watch is completely polished, except for a little bit of brushing on the mid links. But everything is polished. It's very shiny, gonna be a scratch magnet, 100%. Be prepared if you're into this watch, but it's such a cool shape, such a cool design, 1972. You can feel the vintage vibes. Now let's check out the movement. This one has the Miyota 821A, 21 joules, 21.6 vibrations per hour, 42 hours power reserve. It doesn't hack, unfortunately, but it does have hand winding. So I think that's the most important thing, the hand winding. You can always try to back hack if you want to try to set it to atomic time, but it might be fruitless. This one is rated at minus 20 plus 40 seconds a day. So accuracy, not its strong suit, but we're going to check it out on the time grapher at the end of the video and see how good this movement performs. All right. So the measurements, these are the ones I got with my calipers 44.5 in diameter. Okay. 14.9 in thickness, so a chunky one, and a wingspan of 46.1, going to wear amazing on most wrists because of that measurement, the most important measurement. Typically for a 44.5 thick watch, you don't get that short of a wingspan. So very nice there. Now the crown I measured at 5.8, so probably a six mil crown, decent size. Wish it was a little bit bigger. And the secret measurement, the bezel 41.2 and that high polished sides are going to disappear. So it might look like a 41 on wrist. We're going to check it out on my wrist and see if it does have that visual trickery. Now the case back is solid. Let's check it out. There it is. Now the bracelet seems like it's all solid, solid end links right there, solid links, and it looks like it's screwed links, which surprised me. Now, ah, why is this stuck? 
All right, a little bit tough there. Unfortunately, it's got the pressed cheap metal clasp, not milled, so it feels a little flimsy because of that. Yeah. Mm, closing sound, not the greatest. Feels a little gentle. Three micro adjusts. So bracelet is just all right. But look at that articulation. That's amazing. Gonna be ultra comfortable on wrist. So big plus there for the bracelet. Now the bezel and bezel insert, I couldn't find out the material of this bezel insert. It looks like some kind of a coating on top of aluminum one, a resin. I don't believe it's sapphire. It might be, but I don't want to scratch it <laughs> to test it out. So I'm going to try to figure that one out for you guys. But there you can hear the bezel, everything lines up. There we go. Very clicky, a little bit tinny. Not my favorite action, but I know a lot of people like this. Very little backplay, if any, it's just settling in. Some people like that sound. What do you guys think? I don't know, I'm warming up to it a little bit more, but I still prefer the buttery. Oh man, can't even hear it. <laughs> I love that premium, smooth, dampened feel. Oh yeah. So the bezel action, up to you. Are you a fan of the big clicks, the loud, tactile feel? If you are, perfect. Now let's check out that dial and hands. Beautiful green dial. It is a stunner. It looks a little bit like it has a touch of teal in there. So not 100% like a dark green, like let's say grass would be, or even like a lighter green like lime. It's something, something different. There's, I believe there's a touch of teal in there. But you don't, you don't get any hints of blue. 100% feels like a green watch. And the bezel insert as well, green, all the way to the 15. So very nice. Now the hands are very thick batons, filled with loom, lollipop second hands. The hands do look short if you notice that. And that is 100% on purpose because those indices are very unique. They are all applied. Do you see them? I'm gonna try to show you some macros. They are tube indices and they are clear. So acrylic tube indices, see-through indices, very cool. So they just fill up a loom, like filling up the cup. So they're very tall and the hands will not pass over them. All right, so that's a, that's a cool feature. I'm gonna expect crazy good loom because of those deeply filled tube indices. So I can't wait for the loom shot at the end of the video. Stay tuned. We got a frame date window. Very nice, high polished. And then the reason why this is called the Devil Diver is the 666 water resistance. You see there at the bottom of the dial, 666 feet. So very cool. Applied below the logo and ocean graph underneath. So very nice. Also the dial is divided on the poles, north, south, east, west, with a white line. So very cool look. And that's the dial. I forgot to mention that the crown is signed, guys, with the word Bolova. Now, the price. You can get this one right now for 636 USD. So a little bit steep now because of micro brands and Apple Watch and all that. I believe Bolova needs to upgrade the movement and put a little bit more advertising in their history to showcase the value you can get with a Belova. I believe they were a really great company in the past and have fell a little bit stagnant nowadays. So hopefully they do come back. Now the Accutron line has been separated from Belova. Their bread and butter, now it is like a luxury watch. Very nice, I'm gonna show a picture of one that I think is really cool. And they have innovated again with the electrostatic movement. Super cool. Hopefully I can get one on and do a video on it. Very, very nice. Now let's go back to this watch. Uh, let's compare it with an SKX. All right, here it is next to the SKX. 44.5 versus 42. 
man, they look very similar. That is because of the high polish case on that Belova. It's just disappearing in the light. Very cool effect. And they both have a similar bezel, 41.2. I believe the SKX is as well 41.2 or 41. Damn. So there you go. If you can wear an SKX, easily you can wear the Devil Diver. Look at that. Now let's check them out like this. Yep, very nice. Man, such a cool case shape. That Ternal style case. All right. And guys, this one does have a beautiful double dome sapphire. And it is boxed a little bit, but then it also domes. So that adds to that height, that 14.9 millimeter height. You're getting about, I think it looks like two mils. So a little bit deceiving in height. Let's check it out on the wrist then. All right, there it is on my six and a half inch wrist. So I'm looking around the camera and it does wear great. It is that 46 lug to lug doing its job. It actually wears very well. Does look a little bit big on camera though. But off camera has a lot of presence and fitting excellent. Damn. So yeah, I'm surprised. I'm surprised I can wear this. Very nice. Very cool look. Yep. They also have a black one and they also have, they also have one with an, a Salita movement, an SW200, but I believe that one's limited to 666 units. The Devil Diver 666. They do have an upgraded movement. They're probably gone by now, those limited ones. And I forgot to mention the coolest thing. Date window has a Cyclops on it, but you, you can't touch it. It's underneath the crystal. Wish more brands would do this because, you know, the Cyclops bugs a lot of people when it sticks out. It's definitely an interesting, maybe more companies should be doing this and more people will be accepting of the Cyclops for a little bit better legibility. Let me know down in the comments, what do you guys think of the under the glass sapphire date magnifier? Now let's check out the weight. This is with all the links Okay, it was not zeroed. 159 grams, nice and lightweight. It doesn't feel too heavy, feels great. This is a great weight. And when you remove some links, it's gonna be even lighter. So very nice there. Okay guys, if you wanna buy a time grapher, links below, of course. Now for Myota, we're gonna have to go to 49. We usually go the other way for the Seiko movements, so, oops. Okay, so we're gonna go to 49, the beat rate automatic, let's go. There you can hear that, 21.6 VPH, wow. Look at that amplitude, 330, very strong. So this is rated, remember, at plus 40 seconds a day and minus 20. But as we can see here, I'm assuming Belova regulates it because we have a very nice plus eight, plus six, plus seven, 0 0.1 milliseconds in B air. Very nice. And the amplitude is so strong. 319 right now. Very good. Let's see if it settles down. We'll do four more rounds. So plus six. Oh, it's settling. Plus five. Now we'll do two more rounds and you know what? Let's check out the positional accuracy. Why not? In the two main positions, dial up and 12 down. Let's do 12 down. Wow, plus five. So impressive movement. Although it doesn't have hacking, pretty good. Oh, just jump to plus six. All right, let's do 12 down. Let's give it a chance to reset. There we go, 12 down. Your watch is always in 12 down, guys. Like most of the time when you're doing stuff. All right, so here we go. We have plus 12, 272 amplitude, 0 0.5 beat air. So the beat air increased uh, by 0.4. Amplitude dropped by 50, so big drop in amplitude and the positional accuracy. 
plus 13. So we jumped about six seconds. Hmm. Six seconds. So if you wanted to regulate this, uh, you would probably try to go down to negative two to negative six, somewhere around there on dial up. And then during the day, because 12 down, it should be roughly around zero on wrist. That's just a quick, quick and dirty math on it. Of course, it's not that 100% simple. Ooh, we got a little bit more drop in amplitude now, 253, 13 seconds a day. And the beat error did increase a little bit. All right, so positional accuracy, not the strong suit of the Myota 800, 800 series. I really think they should put the nine, the 9000 series, the 9015. A lot of micro brands are using that. And Citizen owns Belova, and that's Myota, so it's their own company. So they should definitely upgrade their own watches instead of focusing on selling their movements to other people. Focus on your watches, guys. Okay, with a couple lights on in the background, the loom is excellent. The second hand is loomed, and you got the nice loom on the bezel insert. But it's just at the 12, but still pretty good. I knew it. I knew those deep filled loom uh, tubes indices will light up good. Uh, for comparison, SKX. Yep, a little bit brighter than the SKX and they've been under the studio lights for the exact same time. No charging done to both of them. So very nice. So excellent loom. Good job, Belova. Okay, so here it is under some half lighting. Very nice color. I'm a fan of the green. Green watches always have a special place in my heart. Now, I wore a green watch on my wedding. <laughs> so that's probably why. Do love the green watches. Now, this one, you're not gonna get that ultra high quality feel that sometimes I talk about. It just feels uh, average. It doesn't have that premium vibe. So I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the bezel. Maybe it's the bracelet. Probably a little bit of both but it is vintage inspired 1972 reissue and feels vintage. I guess vintage watches didn't feel high quality. So maybe this is true to form. <laughs> Anyways, it's a great watch. If you can get it at a great price, email me for a discount code. This one is cool. I like the name, the devil diver. It's just interesting and the color and the case is beautiful. Just wish they would upgrade that movement and maybe put a better bracelet. That would be the next steps for this watch, my opinion. Now, if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.